Hello and welcome to Rocket Science 101 and probably one of the least clickable videos I'm going to make this summer. And no, I'm not here to tell you that rockets use Newton's third law for the millionth time. I'm going to be doing my best to break down one of the weirder parts of rocketry, that being specific impulse, or ISP, the efficiency of your rocket engine. So let's get into it. So there are a few videos I found that talk about ISP, but they're usually focused on just the math or the explanation is buried in a much longer video. Scott Manley and David Mee both did mathematics based videos way back in 2013 and 2014, both in the first week of April for whatever reason, and Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, gave a very interesting explanation in his recent masterpiece on rocket engines which you should definitely check out if you haven't. But his explanation does fall 25 minutes into an almost 50 minute long video, hence why I want to make this video that's dedicated to the topic of specific impulse. And finally, Isaac Arthur also gave a very quick explanation of ISP in his recent video on space planes, though it is less accurate than Tim Dodd's. So I'm going to start by ripping off Tim's explanation, though you should really check out that video, and then I'll dive into ISP a little bit more. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, ISP is a measure of efficiency. It tells you how much punch you can get out of a specific weight of fuel. There are variations on specific impulse, such as density specific impulse, which considers the size of the fuel rather than its weight. But when we're doing rockets, mass is king, so we use good old ISP. The example Tim used was a rocket with one kilogram of fuel and he said that ISP was the number of seconds that that rocket could produce 9.8 newtons of thrust. Um, actually, that's 9.80665 newtons of thrust. It's one kilogram multiplied by standard gravity. Come on, that's like a 0.0007% error at that level of accuracy of much bigger problems. I think you mean an error of 19 28 thousandths and 19 unless you want that in decimal form. <sighs> Thank you, physics subreddit. Now get out of here or I'm going to start rounding it to 10. Ugh. Okay, so long story short, Everyday Astronaut did his homework, this explanation is correct, and I'm Conhathy, and at this point I've just ripped off some other guy's explanation, I should probably add something to this video. Oh, uh, yeah, why one kilogram of fuel and why 9.8 newtons of thrust? Well, it all has to do with units. Have I mentioned how weird it is that efficiency is measured in seconds? That's weird, right? I mean, usually we have a percent or something. But like I said earlier in rocketry, mass is king. We don't care what percent of the potential energy in the fuel turned into kinetic energy in a moving rocket. We just want to carry as little fuel as possible. So we measure efficiency in terms of mass into velocity and not energy into other kinds of energy. Now don't freak out, we're not going to do any math, but this is a very important equation that uses ISP. Basically you put numbers in and it tells you how fast you're going after you burn a certain amount of fuel. This is where we use ISP and notice that it's multiplied by standard gravity, that g naught. This is where that 9.806 nobody cares comes from. And it's also worth noting that it's a constant, not the gravity of where you are in space. It doesn't matter if you're flying by the sun and gravity is 10 times what it is on Earth, or if you're cruising with Voyager and gravity is basically non-existent. Shh. It doesn't matter where you are, you'll always calculate your ISP using Earth's standard gravity. This is done because the mass efficiency of your engine has nothing to do with gravity. We just needed a conversion factor with units of acceleration, and gravity is convenient. For one, it lets you use the weight of your fuel instead of its mass, click up here to learn all about that nonsense, but it was also super helpful in the 50s and 60s when German scientists were working with American scientists. Germans use metric, Americans use imperial, and the nonsense is back. But hey, NASA pretty much exclusively uses metric now, so calm down. At the time, having ISB in seconds meant it could bounce between both systems without causing problems. And because both sides knew gravity by heart, Everything was super easy and worked perfectly. Eventually. Anyway, this is all just to explain why Tim used 1 kilogram of fuel and 9.8 newtons of thrust. The 1 kilogram fuel just makes the math easy because it's a 1. And if you multiply that by standard gravity, you find the weight of the fuel, which is 9.8 newtons. 
This is the same as the amount of thrust the engine has to produce. And now I've created some confusion because it sounds like ISP could be simplified even more to the amount of time that your rocket could hover. And that would be wrong. This is the mistake that Isaac Arthur made, though it's an understandable one. The most obvious thing is that the rocket has some weight that doesn't come from fuel, but that's not our biggest problem. As you hover, you burn fuel, and as you burn fuel, you get lighter, and as you get lighter, you have to use less thrust, which means you burn less fuel, which means you hover longer, and you can literally hover forever if we're ignoring the weight of the structure. And even if we add the weight of the structure back in, you're still getting lighter over time, so you can hover longer than you would if you were producing constant thrust. Tim's explanation assumes constant thrust, and this leads to constant fuel consumption, which leads to a consistent time for your ISP. And this agrees with the definition of ISP as the impulse per change in earth weight of propellant. For the uninitiated, impulse is a measure of force multiplied by change in time, and it comes in handy because you can divide by the mass of something, and it will give you the change in speed. But because Tim set his force equal to the change in earth weight of propellant, that means everything cancels except for the change in time, which means ISP is equal to the number of seconds that you can produce a force equal to the initial weight of your fuel. It's slightly less intuitive than hovering, but it's more accurate and most importantly, more consistent. So, good job, Tim. I got you. I told you we weren't going to do any math, but I made you divide one by one. <laughs> Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you have a slightly better understanding of specific impulse. Uh, I'm kind of happy, and I'll see you in the next video. There were a number of failures during the year, and the United States promptly announced them. The first and most spectacular of these was Vanguard at the end of 1957. There were other Vanguard failures, all achieved takeoff, but trouble occurred either in the second or third stages.